what, what do you think about you know this event between uh, Comicsology as well as uh, Heroes Initiative to put together an event like this that you know benefits something that's that a lot of people kind of take for granted, which is you know what what creatives do in terms of, of allowing you know not only kids but also adults to you know appreciate um, uh, art or, or artistry. Well, you know what to me is like. You know, I wouldn't be here if not for the guys that inspired me. It's guys like Jack Kirby, you know, John Severin, uh, Ross Heath, I mean, Gene Colan, all the people that I grew up reading. Those are the guys that inspired me to draw in the first place. I always say that um, I'm lucky enough to be standing on the shoulders of giants. These guys inspired me to draw. And these guys also put in the, um, uh, the, the hard miles and fought the good fight and allowed for a creator's rights to be uh, understood, explored, and then exploited so that um, I was able to create something like the Ninja Turtles and also share in the success of the creation, which is something that they started to do wrong from and they never had that opportunity. So when you look at something like Hero Initiative, what I think is, is by far, you know, I make a wish, Dream Factory and Hero Initiative are my favorite charities. Um, uh, Hero Initiative, just what they're doing and helping out guys, again, that um, allowed me this opportunity. It's something that I wholly support, and I'd like to, you know, I've been with them, I think, three years, four years now, and I continue, you know, want to continue to be with them for a long time. And what I love about, you know, integrating this with Comixology is I think Comixology is the next wave of self-publishers. I mean, when I was in, you know, when Peter and I drew the first Turtles and we were able to self-publish, it was because there was a, a direct market, there was a place, and there was a thriving business that allowed us to not only um, learn our craft. I mean, the first comic we ever drew together, the first comic, the longest comic I ever drew was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, um, be able to publish that, um, have success from that, make a living uh, doing something I dreamed about since I was a kid. Um, now you have something like Comicsology that can reach masses in a way that nobody else ever could. So I think it's a real the next, it's the the next frontier. Awesome, awesome. Well, speaking of Ninja Turtles. Um, you know, I'm sure you get this question asked a lot, and I ask artists and creators this all the time. You know, when when you when you drew it that first time, or when you drew those characters that first time, you know, did you have kind of that, you know, that feeling that okay, you know, this is going to be big, or you know, you you kind of just doodle it, and you know, some it, it just you know it just uh, it just hits off, or it just you know connects with people. Um, when we drew the first <laughs> the first issue of the turtles, um, I was 100 percent absolutely positive that not one person would buy a single copy of it, um, and I think Peter shared the same thing. But what was, was what was the most important to us is that we had so much fun doing it. And we told, you know, again, when you're not assuming anybody's going to buy it, it's not going to be the next big thing. It's not going to be anything. We drew and we put so much love and passion of what we wanted to see in a comic book and what we thought would be funny, what we thought would make a good story, um, and what's took us by surprise and it's crazy that it just hit and it resonated whether it's a uh, the right place in the right time or whatever but it's um you know it really started as a playful love of uh of cartoon and comic books again our favorite jack kirby isms our favorite frank miller isms um you know guys like dave sim which were pioneers i mean drawing this little aardvark um like barry smith drew conan running around as a barbarian i mean the guy went on to do 300 issues and is a living legend he was in his big inspiration to me as well so um yeah it's it's uh, it's it's amazing to me that you know I'm here at Comic Con 30 years after the first Turtles <laughs> issues came out. The first Turtle issue came out. Um, Pete and I, our first comic convention here, um, at com uh, first Comic Con was 1985, um, and it's almost 30 years later. I'm doing an interview with you talking about Turtles. That's it's the greatest, this greatest job ever. Oh <laughs> uh, well. Also, speaking of Turtles, there is a a, a film. Uh, uh, coming out, and I know, you know you're, you know, involved with that process, with, 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 to some degree in terms of, you know, how, what, what's going on with that film. Um, can you tell me, can you like discuss like what stage from, from your involvement, what stage the the project's in? Because I know there's been a lot of, you know, controversy over all the different like reboots and all the, you know, everything that's been going on with the film and with what what's been changed from the, you know, the original canon. Well, you know, it's interesting, and when I look at, like, when you look at the original black and white comic that Peter and I did, um, it was, again, edgier, it was intended for an older audience, um, it was something that we um, we did exactly the same, the kind of comic we wanted to do, and when it became, um, when it had an opportunity to become uh, an animated series, you know, Peter and I, because we owned and controlled the property, we, we directed it, everything that happened with the Turtles in the early days, changing the things we changed to make it an animated, something that was specifically for a younger audience, we either 
Um, the ideas we came up with as part of it, we worked, we, oh, we approved every aspect of it, but it was different from the black and white comic. And then when we did the movie back in the day, the first Turtle movie, I love, yeah. oh, it's my favorite, the first one especially. I love, yeah. <laughs> um, that was kind of a hybrid, it was kind of a mixture of the best of, um, uh, say, the black and white comic and the animated thing. It was pretty much short, yeah. So you think like, even going back to the very earliest versions of the Turtles when it went into different um, entertainment opportunities, we had three different versions. And so here we are again 30 years later, I mean, Nickelodeon to me has done an absolutely fantastic job relaunching the new animated series, rebooting it, starting it for a, a, a younger audience, and I think it's different, It's very. I know it's, it's very different than the IDW comic, which I'm working intimately on with Tom Wallace and those guys. And that's a different version than the animated series and what Michael Bay is doing, actually Jonathan Liebsman is directing it, um, is going to be again slightly different um, than the first two versions. But all of them come from the same core and the same root. It'll be, it'll be a Turtles movie that I'm going to be very proud of and I think the fans, um, although they've been sort of pointed that way and they've been pointed that way, they're going to be amazed at what, you know, I've seen the final script, I've seen what they're doing. It's going to be a fantastic, true to the origins, Turtle story. Awesome. Well, well, thank you so much, Mr. Eastman. Thank, thank you for your time. Much. Thank you very much.